Wazoo here, and in this episode, we are going to find out how easy is it to use the new SDL3 image. Yeah, this library has been updating alongside the SDL3 core, and I thought I would give working with SDL3 image a shot and see how easy it is to load image data. Okay, so as you can see in front of us, I have got a basic SDL3 main setup using the callback system functionality that's now been implemented in SDL3 core. If you haven't seen my previous video on setting this up for yourself, I'll put a link in the video here right about, I don't know, right about here, and you can go follow that along if you want. You can grab the source code to this, what we're about to do today on my GitHub, and then follow through, and I'm sure it'll start to make sense. Now, all we need to do is include the SDL3 image header file. Boom, done. Perfect. Okay, so next we're gonna be loading our image data into SDL textures, which is what we needed to do in SDL2. So this is kind of more of the same. So I've got three images in, included with this project, PNG file, a BMP file, and a JPEG. I thought one of each is normally what someone might be loading with their application, and so this is a good way to test that you can load all three. So here we're going to create three SDL texture, three SDL texture instances. We've got a texture underscore PNG, a texture underscore BMP, and a texture underscore JPEG to hold the PNG, BMP, JPEG files accordingly. Okay, now gone in SDL3 image is using that IMG underscore load and IMG underscore quit. We no longer need to call that. SDL3 will take care of that for us. So in our SDL app init callback, right after we create the window and render, let's go ahead and load our three image files. Okay, so we're using IMG underscore load texture. We're passing in our renderer. And we're then passing in the file path to the PNG, BMP, and JPEG files accordingly. And then we're just quickly giving a check to, to make sure they all exist. And if there was any kind of problem, then we'll display an error in our console via SDL underscore log. And that's really all we need to do to load those three textures. Now, before we work with them, let's go ahead and clean them up. So in our app quit cleanup callback, before the destroy renderer and window, let's go ahead and just add these three statements. So if, if these instances exist, then just use SDL destroy texture to clean them up. So let's go ahead and run this and give this a test just to make sure our assets are all there and everything is working. So we don't see any kind of error in the log output. So I think that's working just fine. Just as a side note, what I did discover while putting this sample together is that I am using VC package, VC PKG, however you want to pronounce that, to manage the dependencies on my Windows environment for Visual Studio. Now, if I use VC package list, you'll notice here that I've got SDL3 image, which is the core uh, SDL image, and then there's a, an additional JPEG and PNG extension format libraries to go along with SDL3 image core. At first, I didn't have these JPEG and PNG files. I only had the base SDL3 image and the base SDL3 image only works with BMP files. So if you're running into an issue where your image files are there, but they're not being loaded, it says it's an unsupported image format, then that may be the problem. If you do a VC package search, SDL3 image, you get the SDL3 image core along with the JPEG, PNG, TIFF, and WebP extensions. So if you're working with any of those, just make sure those are installed. Okay, back to the demo. Now let's go ahead and actually draw them onto our screen. And this is very similar to how we would draw texture data using SDL2 image. Okay, so I've created three instances of SDL FRECT, and that is to, to hold the PNG, BMP, and JPEG image data. 
and I'm declaring a width and a height. We're going to grab the render output size, basically our window size, and store them in the W and H int variables. Then I'm going to be calling SDL get texture size, and then I'm just going to be passing in the reference to the actual texture data and then passing in these variables to hold the width and the height of those texture datas. And then now finally, let's position these three SDL FRX on our screen. Okay, so I'm positioning the sprite underscore PNG data. It, it's actually just a rectangle. So I'm positioning this sprite PNG rectangle in the middle of the screen as much as I can using the width and the height that we grabbed from the get render output size. And then I'm positioning the BMP and JPEG sprite rectangles at X and Y of 150 and X and Y of 400 respectively. And then finally, after the render clear call, we now just use SDL render texture, passing in the renderer, the handle to the texture and the actual rectangle where we want to draw it to which is given by our sprite png sprite bmp and sprite jpeg data structures so let's go ahead and run this and here we go here's our bitmap file our png and our jpeg file positioned around the screen accordingly nice that was pretty cool and really short there's really not much to working with SDL3 underscore image. The team has made a lot of iterative improvements over SDL2 image, and I'm looking forward to using it more in future SDL3 work. If you like this video, give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment down below if there's something in the new SDL3 library that you want to see more videos of, and I'll take a look. Have a great day wherever you are, everyone. Peace.